eight of CRC Speed Show TV. Special episode two, Sooty, because we get to reveal the special guest who will be coming to join us at this year's CRC Speed Show Expo in July. Yes, that is right. Now, we've given you all a few hints, and there have been a lot of wild guesses on who it would be. I would have thought the image might have been a great clue, because some say he is actually the DNA clone child of Chuck Norris and Betty White. Some also say he probably only drinks 5W50 and his entire body runs on 12 volts. And some say he may be a better driver than me. That's potentially true. Uh, but we all know he's actually the stick. Yes, welcome Perry McCarthy, the original, the man who got bored driving a Vauxhall. It's a delay, it's London. There he is. Hi guys. Hey. Uh, you're very nice to see you. And it's very nice to have someone else that is losing their hair. Fantastic. I wish it was losing. I had to pass the hands. Lost. Okay, that's probably the stress of having to deal with some of the prima donnas in television that you've had to deal with. Would that be right? Oh, that's just me. <laughs> All right. Well, you're coming to New Zealand and mainly to see Dave here because he's such a great guy. Um, I'm sure you're looking forward to it. Yeah, I can't wait, actually. I've never been to New Zealand. Uh, Got a lot of Kiwi friends over here, so that's fantastic. I hope Paul Radisich is turning up. It'll be great to see him around. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the CRS show is going to be fantastic. I'm just delighted you guys have invited me along. And, uh, you know, just can't wait. We're just going to have so much fun. I hope, I hope a lot of people are going to come along to have fun with us. Oh, no, we will. And uh, the, the people will be queuing at the doors, uh, and, and a lot of them to see you as well. Um, what have you been doing with yourself over the last wee while? If we can hark back and kind of wind the tape back a wee bit, because we, we it, I was going to say we haven't seen your face in a wee while. Uh, but you know, what, what are you been doing with yourself to keep busy? Well, as you can now see, most people prefer me with the crash helmet on and the visor down. You know, uh, they go for the right person. Yeah. And Richard Hammond used to say that they were proud about seeing him a mouthiest driver in motor racing and are finding a way to actually shut him up. But uh, for me, I just go around giving a lot of speeches, actually. I've um, retired from motor racing. Um, there's parts of me that do you know, really miss it. Um, but you know, I, I did my time and had a fantastic adventure. And now I go around the world, actually, uh, giving corporate speeches. And it can be after dinner, or it can be a motivational speech, or a business speech. Um, because I find the business of Formula 1 and motor racing quite fascinating to this day. And so, luckily enough, a lot of people like to hear those stories and that uh, keeps me really busy. And I do a lot of gardening. Uh, well, have you kept yourself dialed up behind the, the wheel of a car at all? I took a, uh, an Aventador out uh, last week for a bit of a blast and um, gave, the, gave it back to the owner. The tyres look different, to be quite honest, once I gave it back. <laughs> okay, well, okay, so if we were to get you out in our live action arena at the CRC Speed Show and put you in a car and get you to do a few demos, what car would you like to be in to do that for us? A Ferrari Formula One. Okay, yeah, just make it. Oh, yeah, why don't you give us something difficult? Uh, I'm just, you wanted a challenge. <laughs> hey, I'm coming all the way to New Zealand. You know, I expect to get some backup from you guys. Can we get that Morris Minor? Remember the Morris Minor? The 850 side valve. Can you handle a Morris Minor? 850 side valve, split windscreen. I love them. Actually, I did race an Austin A40 at Goodwood a few years ago, and that was so much fun. I just, you know, with our, with our racing cars, you're normally coming up to a corner, and it's bang, 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 and you're through the corner. With the A40, of course, you, you're going, I'm still in the corner. I'm still in the corner. I'm still in the corner. That's great fun. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Well, but you, you've got one of those at home. Well, I've got an so, old car we can put them in, but you know, maybe we need something styly, like a, a nice 80s sedan, something that's, you know, because as you would agree, there was no better design of cars than in the mid-80s. They were really the peak of automotive brilliance and design. We'll find something from the 80s to throw you in, I think. Yeah, I'm getting a bit worried about your interpretation of cars. So, guys, tell me, what, what weather can I expect in Auckland when I get down? In July? It'd be crap, won't it? In July. Um, how do we put this nicely? Rubbish. Yep, that's, that'll probably do it. But see, the fans don't care. They turn up every year to the show, regardless. Rain, hail, shine. Mainly to see Dave now, but... Yeah, I, well, I can see that. You know, a man of style, good-looking and intelligent. It's, uh, 
How am I doing, guys? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah right, you'll, mate. you'll probably Thanks, you'll mate. be on you'll be on par with him, I think, and and the two of you will make a great sideshow. <laughs> and I look forward to the capes. that will be great. Are we going to have um, are we going to have carting there? Yes. I w- have you have yeah. asked for a cart. I will organise a cart just for you and for the rest of the fans. I wonder if we're going to have a cart race. Mm. Oh, is, is that a challenge? Is he a, just, I think that's a challenge for you. Is he just throwing down a challenge? I think that might be a challenge yeah. for you. I think that's... All right. Challenge is on, son. Challenge is on. <laughs> He's shaking. You can't <laughs> see it through Skype. He's shaking. <laughs> this could be very, very embarrassing for you, Perry. Uh, don't, don't, don't worry. I'll give you a minute head start. I like him. We're going to get on great. Looking forward to seeing you, Perry. Um, in the meantime, enjoy your uh, your English summer, uh, which is what again? Actually, it's wonderful here. It really is at the moment. Yeah. He is an awesome liar, isn't he? <laughs> no, seriously. Right. New Zealand people, come to England. We have good weather and culture. True. And fantastic rugby players. All right. Well, we'll look forward to seeing him in July, won't we? Indeed. Thank you very much for your time, mate. Really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to coming over, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Now, there's a chance to win 200 bucks with a CRC product as well. You may have seen the ad on Facebook. All you need to do is in the comments section, tell us who the special VIP guest is. We've just chatted to him. Put it in there. And uh, in episode nine, which is the next one in a couple of weeks, we will be drawing and announcing the very special winner. So good luck. Get on the old Facebook and tell us who. Now. It's time for some news. Don't know if you know, but in April, Ford USA announced that they're getting out of the sedan and hatch car market to focus on trucks, utes, vans, and commercial vehicles. No more Fusion, no more Focus. This will get you, no more Fiesta and Taurus. Now, we don't know what that means for us down here or the Euro market, but it's a significant change in direction. They want to make SUVs and crossovers, and they're making things bigger and heavier because apparently the price of fuel's coming down. <laughs> Certainly not here. The thing is, though, they are going to make machines suitable for off-road use when hardly any of them take to the dirt. They are leaving behind the hybrid and electric cars for others turning away from being green, and after 115 years of family transport, they're turning their backs on that side of the market. And for fun, you'll love this, mate. Have a look at this first-ever US TV ad for a Taurus from 1986. For us, now there is a personal car that has exactly what we're looking for. Taurus, now there's an American car with the shape and the feel we've never seen before. For all of us who demand excellence in design and function, for all of us who will not compromise, Ford listened. Ford created Taurus for us. For us, now there's an American car that has exactly what we've been looking for. Taurus! Now there's an American car with the shape and the feel we've never seen before. Ford has seen where we're going. Ford has heard us loud and clear. Ford has seen the future and now the future is here. For us. Taurus. For us. Taurus. For us. Have you driven a Ford? And speaking of being green, even though the Toyota Prius is the most commonly lambasted and hated hybrid on the market, I say that as it's been around the longest, so it gets picked on the most. The car that is the best hybrid on the market in New Zealand at this time is the Ionic. Now, Mr. Dave here and myself will be doing some car tests and reviews in upcoming episodes, and I'll be checking out the Hyundai i30N for a starter, but I'm actually keen to give the hybrids a thorough going over. You may ask why I want to do such things. It's because electrics are the future. Fight it all you want. Protest all you want, they're a part of the automotive landscape now. In fact, in Norway, they have already sold out the first shipment of Kona electric cars, and they're not even on the showroom floor yet. They'll be on our roads as well this coming July, but I've actually no idea if they've sold any here yet. Ah, so you've done your homework on Norway, but not here. Cool, mate. Anyway, some more news from the Taka Car airbag saga. As of the 1st of June, the ban on importing cars fitted with those particular models has begun, and the Consumer Affairs Minister, Chris Farfui, says that anyone who has not had the fault fixed on their existing car may fail a WAF. The Vehicle Importers Association, they want the ban timeline extended because there's shipments of cars just ready to come in. 
The government's holding fast on the decision, though, and manufacturers basically have until the end of 2019 to fix all the faulty airbags on existing cars in this country. Yeah, and speaking of manufacturers, Mazda just went past the 50 million mark, starting back in 1931 with a three-wheeled truck. It has basically made 1,582 vehicles every day for 86 years. It's, then it took in 1960, they made a coupe. We all know the history from there. Rotaries, they took that, they made it their own. They've raced them, they've rallied them, they've rolled them. They're still going strong. There's plenty of Mazdas around. I'm a massive Rotary fan. And very soon, in an upcoming episode, we're going to be having a chat to a man who has one of those fantastic beasts. Now it's time to talk about one of the most iconic race cars in history. Not any particular one, just the car itself. It's been used for everything all around the globe and in New Zealand we seem to be quite fascinated with them. Yeah, that's right. The machine is the most popular in rallying, but it is seen doing just as many amazing things on the tarmac. It is a giant killer. They've been around since 1968 and I went to visit a man who has made them dance for himself and others for many years. Well, yes, here I am and yes, you probably guessed right. It's one of these things, it's the Ford Escort. And as we said, it's been around since 1968. It's loved by so many and used so well all around the world. But in particular, here in New Zealand, there is a fascination with the Escort. And this is Bruce. And Bruce is a man, as I said, makes them dance. And you've made them dance for a very, very long time. Let's jump back then, right back. That Escort that you turned up to at racetracks and people went, how? How am I beating everyone? What has he done? Tell us about that car. Well, that was the first one was my turbocharged Escort. That was back in 1979. Nobody heard about turbocharging then. So we, we got a little 1.1 Mark II Escort. I, not, I wanted the Mark II. I didn't, I, I'm not that keen on the Mark ones. So we got a Mark II Escort, 1.1, put a two litre Pinto motor, turbocharged it, made 365 horsepower. And yeah, we had a great time. Everybody would think, well, what's this little turbo thing? How can it make the car go that fast? Well, then we need to talk about the turbos because I suppose in the 80s, people started to get a fascination for them from things like Knight Rider and you push a button, you've got turbo boost. Of course, you would have been sitting there going, nah, that ain't how it works. But you decided in the late 70s that you were going to turbo an engine. No one else was really into it. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, one of our customers had a 240Z Datsun, and I used to work on the rolling road on the dyno, and it came in for a tune. And once I drove it, that was it. I was hooked. Right. But unlike today, where you can just walk into a performance parts shop and say, I'll have that turbo with that wastegate with that part and that part, you would have been, there would have been no books, there no. would have been no internet. How did you go about it? No, we, we just saw trial and error. Oh, that's risky. <laughs> you know, <I> know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was the fun of it back in the days. You just tried things and, uh, and you just developed. But how did you learn about the science of a, of a turbo and putting it on a Pinto motor? Oh, we, we got the turbo from Diesel Services and there was a guy, I can't remember his name there, he was very switched on. He used to, um, he would do the whole you know, analysis of what we needed. Right. And, and that's how it all started. And I'm, I'm trying to think back. I mean, I was only just out of nappies back then. And, and here you are sticking a turbo into an Escort and trying to think of the engineering that you would have had to put your brain around to make it fit. When you, you even look today online and people go, oh, well, I've had to make this exhaust system and this wastegate setup and this and this and this. Here you are doing it without the internet, without the books and actually making it work. So you took it to the racetrack and people didn't know what was under the bonnet. That's right. Did they hear it though? Because it would have made that whistle noise. Or didn't it? No, it didn't make the whistle noise. Ah. Um, but I must admit, like everybody said in the days that you don't run very much overlap in the camshafts. Right. So you, you run a, just like a standard cam with a bit more lift. We ended up putting a camshaft that was 332 degrees of duration, like a big, big cam. And the car just took off. It woke it up. It just went well. Yeah. Gosh, I wish I was there at the racetrack to see people's faces when you actually go past them. And you were going past them. That's you right. were a giant killer. That's right, yes. What were their thoughts? Were they trying to ban you? They did. The South Island boys did. They, they, we used to have to run water injection because we used to run 20 pounds of boost. And we were sucking through a, a carburetor. So we used to run the water methanol to cool the charge. Um, and at the end they said, we can't run any additives in the fuel, which means no water. Right. So which meant then, 
we needed to inject it and intercool it, which we'd, which we'd get another hundred or a couple of hundred horsepower more. So you were okay with that? Uh, sure, we, ban yeah, us and, and yeah, we'll, we we'll come back with more horsepower. But uh, in that stage then, the wife, she wanted a, another house. So the turbo went then. So I, you know, I sold that and the, the pe person who actually bought it, that he had no more problems running the water. Nobody said anything else about it. So The Escort then for you uh, must have a real place in your heart. I yes. mean, obviously. Why though? Out of all the other cars you've could have chosen, why the Escort? I don't know. I just love the Escort. I had an XU1 before the Escort and it was a toss up. I had two cars. You can't drive two on the road. Which one do I sell? But the Escort was so much more fun. You know, with a turboed Escort back on these New Zealand racetracks, you'd become a racing god. That's what would happen. <laughs> what would happen? You know, people just love them and have something oh, no. unique like that. That's right. Yeah. And they like, like, especially like the engine that I've got in here now, which is normally Aspro, they love the sound of it. Yeah. And, and as you say, they like the, all the sideways and all that. And, and I enjoy that when I'm racing. If, if it didn't go sideways, in the, it takes all the fun out of it. Is it still easy to build them and keep them running? Because 1968. You can do. You can buy most of the parts now in England. Like you can buy, buy a whole body shell if you want to. It's, it's only money. OK, so if you're willing to shell out, you can get a shell. That's right, yes. OK, what about the engine though? I remember like people saying in the, the say, the NZV8 touring cars and, and in the HQs, they struggle to find parts and they were raiding scrap bins and they couldn't get engine bits. Can you still do the Escort? You still can get the engine bits now. Um, a lot of them are remanufactured. Like the cylinder head that I run on this, is they homologated it back in 1974. It was a twin cam head and you can, you can buy all that now. But it is, as you say, an engine like this is worth around about 60k. It's, it sounds a lot, but I guess for what you get there, how do we convince you to make that happen? <laughs> Come on, you're going to do it, aren't you? I don't know. No, I, I, I really don't know. I, all right, so what we're going to do on CRC Speed Show TV is we're going to start a campaign to have Bruce Mannon back out there in his turbo escort racing around New Zealand racetracks. Yeah, it's a done deal. All right. Well, we thank you for your time. As short as it is, we could spend hours talking about escorts and engines and racing careers. But when will you be at the track next? Which category are you racing in now, the um, historics? Yeah, well, we've got the 50th anniversary for escorts. So that's in September, which will be just an all escort race. Now that will be at which track? At Hampton Downs. September Hampton Downs? Yes. Okay, then we will be Hampton Downs in September as well, and every other motorsport fan in the country. To watch you race this, and the other car that'll be in your garage then, which will happen to have a turbo Pinto engine <laughs> under the bonnet. Bruce, I thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone that doesn't like escorts is a numpty, would that be fair to say? Escorts, you mean, you mean the cars? For everyone else, I say yes. Now, don't forget, you can grab your early bird tickets for this year's CRC Speed Show online at speedshow.co.nz. We'd love to see you there. Uh, Sooty will be there signing autographs for himself. Perry McCarthy, of course, will be there to keep us all amused too. Yeah, well, that's basically because I'm a legend. Now, I know the live arena planning is just about finished and there will be a lot of action in there as always, which will include some good old fashioned racing. And inside the halls, it will be packed with exhibitors ready to talk to you about all things automotive. Uber cool, as the kids would say. Now, since winter is upon us, the car racing's a little bit light at the moment, a little bit limited. So that means there's plenty of time for you to make your own view of it, of you and your machine, and then send it to us to be shared with the many masses watching right now. Talk to us about your ride. What have you done to it? What do you want to do to it? Whether it's finished or not, tell us all about it. We are actually genuinely interested and uh, yeah, get filming. Send it to us. You can send us in an email or message it to us on Facebook. We will help you with the transfer. Now, a product update. In an earlier episode, one of our mailbag questions was about cleaning those yellowed and faded headlights on your car. They're all yucky, yucky. Yeah. It centred around the old tale of using toothpaste, which we found out was a no-no. We went to Maguire's to find out the facts. I can now update everyone on this because I decided to roll up my sleeves and have a crack myself. This is the result before. This is after. Before and after. Yucky yellow, nice and clean. I am a genius. Well, the product is a bit of a genius. But yeah, but don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Hey. Pick all that. So as we say goodbye for this episode, we leave you with the last of our strangest forms of motorsport because we need Dave here to pick one. I don't know which one of the five he will go for in the end, but I have a feeling, a really strong feeling, that this one may be right up his alley. Is it plate racing again? No. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.